for the first time we actually have a material that will work. This material is revolutionary. It's really the future of fission. So this is a breakthrough technology. The nuclear power we use today was developed in the 60s and the 70s. It has provided us with a reliable and carbon dioxide free source of electricity ever since then. And it's actually amazingly safe. If we measure the number of deaths per kilowatt hour, nuclear power is safer than hydro, solar and wind, even counting the accidents in Chernobyl and Fukushima. But still, there are shortcomings. The high-level nuclear waste must be stored in geological repositories for hundreds and thousands of years. Also, the fuel will not last forever. In a hundred years from now, we will have to find new ways of producing nuclear energy. The solution to these shortcomings may be so-called Generation 4 reactors. They are able to recycle the high-level waste from existing nuclear power plants so that the residual waste must be stored less than 1,000 years instead of 100,000 years. Moreover, they can use the waste from enrichment plants to create new fuel that would allow us to produce nuclear power for more than 10,000 years into the future. Also, they should be safe enough that we can avoid any need for evacuation even after the most severe accidents. All liquid metals are corrosive and in the case of liquid lead, it's important to control the oxygen content in the liquid lead. It shouldn't be too much because then it could form lead oxides and that's not good for the system. And, but it should be enough to form a protective metal oxide on your steel surface and then it is manageable. We improved the corrosion system um, using steels containing aluminium. Uh, these steels have shown to form a very thin protective uh, aluminium oxide on the steel surface, which is protective in, in our studies up to at least 10,000 hours at 550 degrees C in, in molten lead. So this is our Giza 1 facility where we do all the screening experiments uh, for the material research. Here is the cathode on top, the anode, it's a triad and here is the accelerating part and here is the treatment chamber where all the specimens are placed and pulsed by the electron beam. The really exciting thing that we've been doing recently is by using spark plasma sintering, which is hot pressing of a pellet while running high currents through it, we've been able to produce the most dense uranium nitride pellets that have ever been made. Uh, now the next step for us is to qualify this production technique by performing a radiation test so we know how they behave. So this is the Giza 4 facility, especially designed for the treatment of, of fuel uh, gliding tubes. And it's a cylindrical accelerator where the tubes are inserted inside. So the process is as following. We put a coated tube inside the accelerator. And after treatment uh, by Giza, we receive a surface alloy, which is now bright, smooth, and with a metallic bonding uh, of the coating to the surface. This is example of a commercial stainless steel used as a cladding tube. Um, but we have to improve the corrosion resistance and um, the project has shown that the alumina forming steels are really the solution to this corrosion problem. Here we have examples uh, of steel exposure in liquid lead at 600 degrees C for 4000 hours. The non geyser treated steel is completely destroyed after this time, whether the geyser treated steel specimens looks new. Liquid lead is the perfect coolant for a nuclear reactor. It doesn't react chemically with any other materials. It has a very high boiling point and it circulates by itself. Here in this facility at KTH we have shown by experiment how the natural convection makes it possible to remove the decay heat of a nuclear power reactor without the use of any pumps. Lead is a safe coolant for reactors because it's a non-reactive fluid and it's a good fluid for removing heat from the system. It is uh, safe, it's, uh, it's non-reactive, it has good properties for natural circulation, so even it will remove heat even when the electricity is, is absent, as in station blackout scenarios. So 
why don't we have these generation 4 reactors already? Because the technology is available. It turns out that it is so expensive that only major governments like France and Russia can afford to build big demonstration plants. Currently, the nuclear industry is reluctant to invest their money into projects that will not be profitable within the next 30 or 40 years. Now, our solution to this dilemma is to build very small lead-cooled fast reactors for commercial electricity production in regions where electricity today is extremely expensive. For instance, in the northern parts of Canada, there are a lot of communities that have no connection to the national power grid and they pay 10 times more than we do for electricity produced with, with diesel generators. Now in these regions where the sun doesn't shine for half the year, solar power is not an alternative and it's too cold to use wind power. So the only alternative to diesel is nuclear power. And now this is what we aim for. We are going to provide the Arctic regions in northern Canada with small lead-cooled fast reactors. We believe our materials uh, that we use in sealer will survive for 30 years. Firstly, we lower the temperature to about 450 degrees C. We also intend to use aluminium containing stainless steels, which we develop in collaboration with the Swedish steel industry. In the long run, we have to show that our steels are corrosion resistant long term, and for that, we need your support.